Would I choose this over the Yardmaster? What's up people, welcome back to my channel. While Swiss and Japanese watches dominate the mainstream, if you're after something a bit more unique, like German-made timepieces that won't completely break the bank, check out these collections from Kudoke. Since this is my first video on Kudoke, let me start with a brief introduction to the brand before diving into my review of the two watches and sharing which one I prefer. If you prefer to skip straight to the watches, feel free to jump ahead to the timestamp listed below. The independent watch brand Kudoke was founded in 2005 by master watchmaker Stefan Kudoke, a veteran in crafting skeletonized and engraved timepieces. You may have seen his work at renowned brands like Glasuta Original, Breguet, Blancpain and Omega, where he honed his skills in the Atelier Fio Capricatonium. Did I say that right? In 2018, Kudoke introduced his first in-house movement, Caliber 1, which powers the K1 and K2 models, launched at Basel World 2019. That same year, the K2 won the Petit Aigui Prize at the GPHG Awards. A big thanks to Sincere Fine Watches for giving me the opportunity to review these timepieces and see what all the buzz is about. If you're around the area, do stop by their boutique to check out these watches and other rare collections from various brands. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, I'll really appreciate if you could hit that thumbs up and subscribe button as it helps this channel grow and allows me to bring more rare watches to review for you. For those already subscribed, thank you so much for your support. The K1 and K2 are part of the Handwork collection, with Handwork meaning Handcraft in German. Alongside these two models, there is also the K3, which features an unconventional hour display in the classic handwork style. I'll likely review that one another day, but for now, let's focus on the K1 and 2. The K1 is a simple three-hand time-only watch with an all-polished stainless steel case. Whilst the design isn't overly complex, the case sits between the case back and bezel creating a subtle sandwich effect. One downside to the fully polished case is that it attracts fingerprints easily. At the 3 o'clock position, there's a push-down onion crown with 24 polished notches and an embossed K. The K stands for Kudoke, of course. Duh. The slim polished bezel features a two-step contour, screw down to secure the raised sapphire crystal. Beneath it lies a frosted salmon down, which happens to be my favorite color. Stop it. Get some help. On the right side, there's a Kudoke's nameplate, and on the left, a ring plate that uses a mix of small and large polka dots to indicate the small seconds. The chapter ring features a larger ring, also using polka dots for the hour and minutes, with Roman numerals marking 12, 3, 6, and 9. The nameplate and rings have a satin finish, while the bevel edges around them are polished. All text on the dial is in black, and the hands are polished, fire blue with steel pin caps. The contours on the hour, minute and second hands, more on the hour hand, reflects Kodoke's signature infinity wave design. The leather strap comes in black with matching stitching, though it's a bit stiff for my taste. It features an easy removal mechanism and a pin buckle engraved with the Kodoke logo. The K2 is considered a step up from the K1. And they are not kidding. There's literally a step up in the height of the case. While the K2 uses the same case as the K1, the added 24 hour indicator at the 12 o'clock position, along with a rotating dome sky disc, hand engraved and electroplated in gold, white, and black rhodium to display the day and night, necessitate an increase in the case height. To accommodate this feature, Kodoke added an extra step to the bezel giving the watch its added dimension. Everything else is pretty similar to the K1, save for the dial of course. This K2 features a frosted white dial with the nameplate position at the bottom rather than the right. There's no small seconds function on the K2, but the hand engraved gold rhodium 3D sky disc is absolutely stunning. The 24 hours sub-registered surrounding the disc uses polka dots to mark the hours with Arabic numerals at the 6, 12, 18 and 24 hours position. The rings on the K2 are rhodonized, adding to its refined look. 
For some strange reason, the 12 o'clock marker on the chapter ring is replaced with a dot instead of a Roman numeral. Probably not to overkill the 12 o'clock position as there are too much going on over there. The strap on this one is much softer. It uses a blue suede leather with matching stitching. Both the K1 and 2 has an open case bag with sapphire crystal showcasing its in-house movement. The K1 uses Caliber 1, whereas the K2, with a slight tweak, uses Caliber 1-24H. Both movements have the same visual. The main bridge features a gold-frosted finish with polished fire blue screws. Every opening on the bridge is beveled and meticulously hand-finished, including the ratchet wheel click. Most of the movement components, even those beneath the bridge, are in gold. The balance clock is hand engraved with the infinity symbol, a beautifully detailed touch. Since each engraving is done by Stefan Kudoke himself, every watch has a unique engraving with varying patterns, whips, and depths. For those wanting more, you can even have the entire bridge custom engraved for a reasonable fee. Just like an artist who signs on their masterpiece, Stefan signs each movement with his name engraved freehand. While this part may not look flawless, it's a personal touch that adds to the watch's character. Which do I prefer between the K1 and K2? It really comes down to personal preference as there is no right or wrong choice. I'm particularly drawn to the rotating dome sky disc on the K2. It adds a lot of visual appeal. However, the step-up bezel is a bit of an issue for me. Even without comparing the two side by side, the bezel on the K2 feels disproportionately tall, almost reminiscent of the Kayan people from Burma. In terms of dimension, the K1 is perfect, though the dial feels a bit too plain for my taste. Despite that, I lean towards the K2 because it feels more symmetrical and you get much more value with Stefan's hand engraved work on both the front and back. That said, I can understand the appeal on the K1's simpler dial, especially in the stunning salmon color. The K1 is retailed at 51,380 ringgit while the K2 is retailed at 57,950. To put it into perspective, that's around the price of a Rolex Yardmaster. Would I choose this over the Yardmaster? Absolutely. Anyway, let us know what you think of these watches in the comments below and I'll catch you in my next video. Take care now, bye bye now.